gamification uh, is allowing content to get to the viewer much quicker than it used to be years and years ago because now we have the internet and we can uh, we have cell phones so somebody out in a remote site doing a news show could get in their cell phone and report back to the studio much quicker we can now send uh, pieces of a, of a program digitally across the country in a matter of seconds rather than shipping a tape over well what my job here is I basically work in our transmission center, which is where all the feeds come in and out of the building from uh, our studios in Hollywood and remote sites. And we process that content of those programs and then transmit it out to our affiliates. Now during the writer's strike, what the network decided to do was actually run a lot of rerun shows. And we, they went to a lot of non-scripted shows, which are called reality shows. And we also, uh, got some programs from our sister network Showtime such as Dexter and we started rerunning that. So in the end what happened was the production costs went down for the network because you didn't need to pay for all the new shows being developed. So the, the network actually saved a little money even though the ratings went down. So from my perspective it was status quo, it was no change because I still took in the feeds from the control rooms and put them out to the network. So the, the strike more impacted uh, the production side. There were just no, no shows to shoot, so we just ran a lot of reruns and, and reality shows. Radio is one of our uh, sister operations. We work closely with them on a lot of projects. We have many divisions at CBS. We have a sports division, a news division. Well, the thing about uh, what they're calling media synergy nowadays is media companies tend to own magazines, radio stations, TV stations, internet sites. So radio is just another way of CBS to be able to distribute their content. And because you have all those resources in one location, your radio division now has access to the information that the TV network's putting out and it has the same access that CBS.com would be putting out. So you have all your resources in one location and it becomes much more efficient. We're living in a great time right now. Uh, the goal of a network is to get our content to as many locations and people and demographics as possible. And uh, now you can watch actually watch CBS programs on your cell phone. You could sit at home and watch uh, CBS programs such as the evening news rerun at 7 and 8 o'clock from the 6.30 edition on your home computer. So, uh, you can watch CBS off of a satellite dish, off cable TV. So uh, there's many, many ways to distribute content now that we didn't have years ago. Well, you know, New York is sort of the media capital of the world. And so there isn't no better place to be other than LA, of course, to have your broadcast facility. The thing about New York is, is it's so centralized that there's such an availability of transportation with three airports and the subways and the trains. So you have a lot of talent here, a lot of creative people, a lot of industry people live here. So having the broadcast center in New York uh, basically gives you an unlimited amount of resources to um, transportation, like I said, transportation, talent, people. Well, the great thing about New York is New York looks so real. You could set up a production in a, in a neighborhood on a street corner and you have a virtual set. You don't have to build a set. And the great thing about New York is because it's so, so broadcast and TV oriented, there's so many production studios located in the city that you can immediately, you can shoot your content and immediately take it to an edit house and chop it up and edit it just like you want it and deliver it to a broadcast playout center you know within a couple days so the resources here allow uh, for tv production to be handled so quickly rather than a rural area well a lot of the expected changes that are supposed to happen in the industry that people are saying is the uh the movement to a lot of stuff happening over the internet through ip a lot of content will be going from computer to computer, digital file transfers. So not necessarily everything's gonna be in a tape deck anymore. You might have a whole program 
on a computer where a guy's sitting at his, his, his PC editing a whole show on his computer and he sends the whole, the whole show out of the internet to a broadcast facility. The technology at CBS has improved along with the rest of the industry basically because we've made a huge transition from analog production to digital and then from standard definition digital now to high definition digital. There's a lot more computerized uh, capabilities now of the broadcast facilities, such things as you guys witnessed earlier with the robotic cameras. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of stuff that requires a lot less manpower to operate. Uh, things are um, things look better with the, the newer technology. We have uh, a lot of electronic graphics capabilities that we didn't have many years ago. So a lot of things are automated. Uh, scheduling of tape playout can be automated. You don't necessarily need somebody just to sit and push buttons all day. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is with this whole transition to high definition, that a lot of that came about not only by engineers and scientists developing a better picture, but also the government set a mandate that everybody has to start transmitting in digital by a certain date, which is coming up shortly. And this has caused the broadcasters to have to invest a lot of money in facilities and studios as we took a little tour around here today. And at CBS, we are spending a lot of money and time and, and uh, upgrading our facilities, transitioning to new high definition studios, uh, we're tearing down old facilities, building new facilities. We, uh, part of the high definition uh, transition includes just plain old stereo broadcasting now to 5.1 Dolby, mm -hmm. which we looked at on the audio console earlier, where you actually have six channels of audio being transmitted. Well, to be honest, uh, the next step in the broadcast industry, we're still in that next step, and that is the transition to high definition. Uh, we're probably only about 30% of the way there, creeping up to the halfway mark. There's a lot of consumers who still have to purchase high def sets, and uh, a lot of the networks, including CBS, are still only uh, transitioning to high definition. Some of our studios are high def and some are not. Uh, our, for instance, our CBS Evening News with Katie Kirk is still in standard definition, and we're currently building a new studio for high definition that's supposed to be coming online this summer. So we'll be going high def for, for the evening news. Uh, most of our sports is already in high def. Uh, beyond that, I don't think anyone's really thinking of high def because there's so much money going into high definition right now that that's really what the focus is on right now.